British DJs. An American voiceover. It's the Rich Holly Webb Just Show. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We have a special guest in the studio today, Mr. Rich Webb. Hey, yo. That's a huge crowd of people. Yeah. Rog Weeb is here. How are you doing, boy? You all right? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, How are you doing? Good. Yeah, not too bad, mate. It's, uh, Harley is currently playing on the beach in Albra at the moment. So uh, I had to draft in somebody, and obviously I had to go for the most talented person I know. Oh, but... geez. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yes, Jesus, actually. It is actually Jesus. Hello. Oh, right, yeah. Musical Jesus. He is very talented. Yeah, he is, rather. It's just, <laughs> just difficult to play guitar with holes in your hands. Uh, so what Rich Webb does, he owns a website called Webtunes. He also teaches uh, through multiple schools as peripatetically. And also um, uh, you uh, go with IEM with Sam Robson, who actually has an office up here in Punch Studios as well. Um, well, let, let, well, I'll stop talking about you. Why don't you tell me what is your forte, sir? Oh, my forte. Yeah, I think it's a fort with an E. Yeah, I've never quite figured that out. <laughs> I don't actually know what my main thing is. That's, right. that's always been the problem. I'm always sort of like uh, sort of straddling between all these different avenues of income with music. Yeah. And that's kind of the only way I've been able to survive. Yeah. Um, I've always been a sort of, I don't know, jack of all trades, master of none to the extent where like I have to keep picking up new things to stay relevant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it's a relevant thing. I, I, you're, you're one of those beautiful mind types where you can learn something super easy and super quickly to make it functional. Um, uh, you beat yourself up for not being able to do it completely pro immediately. But I mean, like with the saxophone thing, I mean, just just so you guys know, Rich Webb is in the Lockerbillies with me. Uh, if regular listeners to the show uh, know this because I don't shut up about him. Uh, but he uh, learned uh, saxophone in about a week and then gigged with it that week, wasn't it? Yeah, so I had Planet Music on Tuesday, which is where I used to work, and they had a second-hand saxophone in there, and I bought it on a whim on a Tuesday and then played it at the gig on the Saturday. <laughs> but that was because, like, I, I'm, I wouldn't expect anyone to do that who hasn't already been sort of musically trained. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be anytime soon sort of, I don't know, like juggling chainsaws or anything like that. But, you know, after, after a few weeks. Please you know. don't, man. I need your hands. They're useful. Yeah. I mean, I mean, oh, I worry about your safety. Oh, oh yes. You have a son. They're, ins they're not insured. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, what have you been doing this week? Because I know that you have been uh, composing. Yeah. Um, so my week has mostly entailed uh, with working on a commission that I got through a website called Air Gigs. Mm -hmm. so .com, .co.uk? I think it's a dot .com right, yeah. because it's actually, it all works in dollars, I think. Uh, it's all American, so they, they pay you in dollars and you get paid, therefore, like less than you're seeing on the screen a lot of the time. Mm. But yeah. um, this is actually something that came to me through Murray. Ah. So Murray told me about Air Gigs. Uh -huh. and Murray I, Collins of Impilo and the Lockerbillies. That's right. And I went and checked it out. And I've actually signed up to a million of these websites <laughs> where it's like, you know, oh, just sign up your details here and you'll always get calls from people yeah. about like gigs and, you know, Did like... You try um, Encore. Yeah, Encore, yeah. Last Minute Musicians, The Works, and I've had, you know, nothing from any The Works of them. is a stationary shop. Yeah, but no wonder no one's came to me. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any rulers? <laughs> yes. Fresh out, but I can do you a lovely bit of orchestration. Game soundtrack, yeah. yeah. So um, I did the same thing on audio gigs, just kept uploading stuff. And uh, eventually someone got hold of me. And then once you get the momentum to get one, it starts to snowball because your profile gets sort of um, lifted up above a bunch of the others that have had no uh, work. And then when a... you've done two, you're kind of much higher rated and then three and so on. So you start actually being in the pool of people that are... I don't know, sort of like have, have passed the first vetting, you know? Yeah. So uh, is there a rating system on that kind of thing? Um, yeah. So after the client has completely dealt with you, you've, you've done all the payment, you've given them all the sound files and whatnot, then, yeah, they can give you a five-star rating. But it's kind of weird because no one's going to give you any less than five stars in a mutual exchange that's anything better than terrible. Right, yeah. Because if you give someone a four-star review and you've had like a perfectly normal interchange, then they're going to be like, 
Hey, what? So, yeah. what's up with that little grey star there? It's kind of bugging me. Yeah. <laughs> Losing sleep over that yeah. one little star. It should be either like a thumbs up or thumbs down kind of thing, like YouTube or whatever. Yeah, true. Yeah, because that makes the kind of the fight, it nullifies it a bit, doesn't it? Because that happens on kind of everything now, isn't it? Like, yeah. do you do decimal point worth of rating and how are you actually rating this? Yeah, I'd rather rate you out of 100 because I can't quite decide whether, <laughs> you know, four out of five is really good enough because yeah. you are more of a four and a half out of five. <laughs> Which You're is essentially 80%. 90%. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's got to be criteria for this and everything. But yeah, so so air gigs, um, so it doesn't just sound like a complete load of jargon to everyone else, is a website where you can provide a musical service. Or actually, I think that you can do graphic design on there as ah, well. Oh, cool, right, okay. Just a gig. A you gig. provide a service and mm. people can find your profile and say, I want you to do me, for example... Um, I want you to do me a drum track for my song that I've done everything else on. It just needs drums. Right. Here's the stems or here's like a, a version of it with no percussion on. And can you just add it on? Right. Yeah. That's so cool. you do that and you send it back and, you know, you probably go back and forth a few times and say, well, you know, can you change this bit? Can you change this bit? Right. Yeah. You're allowed a few modifications and then, yeah. Can you, you collaborate um, on the site? So if you, so there other, if you went to other users and just like, okay, I'm a good drummer. But I need somebody who produces well, so you could reach out to somebody else on the site. Yeah, is I there think a social aspect to it? Actually, no, not really. Okay, there's, there's, it's not really geared that way. It's much more about sort of getting one person to do one thing. So, for example, on my account, I've got lots of different services. One of them is I'll track your guitar, mm -hmm. I'll track your bass, yeah, I'll track some drums. But the only one I've ever got work through is one that I call I can't believe it's not orchestra. <laughs> That's smart. But it could be anything. It's also not butter, so I could have called it that yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I suppose it's all about how... Like, if you actually you know, smeared butter on a microphone and just recorded that. Yeah, and when people get the product, oh, actually, I don't think sorry. many of them are very sort of like fooled by the fact that it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's clearly a sound recording. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you think it was butter? Yeah, if you actually sent them just a tub of Marge, it'd been great. Yeah. yeah. So, right. yeah, so, uh, so you've been doing game soundtrack stuff as well, yep. right? Yep, so I've done a couple of games. I've got a game on the PlayStation Store called Battle Islands. Uh, Battle Islands Commanders, I think it's called. Cool. And yeah, it's a, it's a very like orchestral soundtrack. They got hold of me and they said, can you listen to the soundtrack from the film Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. and pretty much recreate it? Guys, <laughs> Pearl Harbor sucked. And that's... And I miss you. <laughs> so you just did that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So... It's weird because like almost everyone in the sort of smaller like smaller games world wants you to recreate something that sounds like something else. Mm. But I imagine when they hire, I don't know, Hans Zimmer or something like when EA Games hires like a really big time composer, they want him to have free reign and just just be magnificent. Yeah, and do just, you just go? Wah, yeah, and we'll exactly. Be well, happy. Yeah, <laughs> but so yeah, just checking you're not peeking it. Out yeah, there. I totally, <laughs> peaked, totally peaked. Um, yeah, because uh, I was watching an interesting video on the YouTube's a little while back about uh, place holding um, sort of music for films and for games, where you watch uh, a film with a soundtrack, and they've obviously said to the composer, "I want our soundtrack to sound like." this one yeah. and you put those two like scores next to each other mm -hmm. and they sound so similar apart from like one chord substitution or something yeah. like this and it's amazing it's what you can get away with as well mm. like because you, that's pretty much the line where you have to test what you can and cannot get away with because mm. a lot of the time the thing that you're stealing if you are plagiarizing a song what you're stealing is the chords and the melody and yeah. you know lyrics but this in this case that doesn't count uh -huh. so you're stealing the chord sequence and the melody together. If you steal one of those by themselves, it's not really plagiarism. Right, yeah. But the problem is with a lot of these clients that don't know a lot about music and therefore have hired someone good to do it, yeah. is they have this view that if it doesn't sound almost exactly like the thing that they wanted you to use as inspiration... It, it just needs to go further. It needs to go closer mm. to that thing. Oh. And a lot of the time, like you say, they've used a placeholder. Mm -hmm. So they've gone, um, oh, we just drag and dropped the, the soundtrack in there of Pearl Harbor. Yeah. 
So can you make your sound like that? And then if you slightly sort of like use a bit of creative license and try and be original with it, they're like, ah, oh, no, can it be more like Pearl Harbor? Because <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, because I need it. Yeah, I, yeah. I need that sort of like Pearl Harbor Sad sound. Affleck, yeah. and, they're, and they're used to it. And a lot of the time it's just what they're kind of, every time they've run the game, they've opened it up and they're hearing that sound. It just sort of makes sense to them. So great mm. example of this is I sent them like a really early draft of a song. Right. And then it had, you know, bits and pieces, problems with it, but I wanted to send it to them quickly. They put it in their early build of the game and they were so used to it that when I sent uh, another version that was, you know, no Way arguments worse. about it, much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't like it as much as the original because they were so used to playing the original yeah it's nuts uh, so yeah like session playing and creating music for other people on a commission basis is entirely i've decided okay down to <laughs> deci rule. deciphering their kind of terminology because they don't have musical terminology so you nice. have to sort of like translate yeah so yeah, I've, like always, some... I've always said this about like being a session player, like a musical session player. Yeah. You've got to, people will say things like, oh, Me can you like make Meg. it a bit more swingy? Okay, yeah. We love Meg. So, we love Meg Burrows. But what, what did she say to you when we were... This is the perfect example. I did, uh, I'm doing a track with Meg Burrows at the moment and Josh recorded a... That's me. A guide track of the, voc of the um, guitar part. Oh, yeah, I see, yeah, yeah. And Meg described it as, uh, it's like a monkey swinging through the canopy. Right, yes. And then I was trying to recreate that guitar part to put down something else on the track or to double track it. Yeah. And I must have played it in a different way. I just listened out for the chords and just played it a different way. Yeah. And she said, yeah, you see, yours is more kind of like the lemur on the forest floor. He's, <laughs> he's following the monkey. He's, he's chasing after him as best he can. <laughs> But it's not the monkey swinging through the canopy. I don't know. I feel like I'd prefer to be the lemur myself. Lemurs, I don't know. It feels like there's there's less stigma. But you're lemur. missing the point that it's not the monkey. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Being able to translate that, and because I mean, you have studied music for a long, long time. When did yeah. you actually first pick up a musical instrument? Oh, what age were you? I think I start. I mean, I, I actually had piano lessons when I was very little, but I think I just was going through the motions. I didn't yeah, really yeah. want to do it. Like recorder. Um, yeah, and I, I think I went through a recorder phase in primary school, <laughs> as everyone did. And then, and then I picked up drums when I went into year seven at Kesgrave High School. So you've been about 11, 12? Um, yeah, around that age and yeah, probably a bit older. And um, uh, Jonathan Woodley, who's the music yeah. teacher at Kesgrave. Still there, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Um, and nice he, place. I think, yeah, I he, he got everyone to do like a really basic eight beat rock thing on their legs. Cool. And um, I was apparently the only one not completely ruining it. So <laughs> he got me up on the drum kit. And when I sat at the kit and I, I sort of, you know, tried the instructions, but on a drum kit, that was just spellbound from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanted to do it forever. Oh, interesting. Well, see you there. You, you've, you've been studying music for, that's 20 years now. Yeah. Um, so you've been... You know, so you've been t learning the terminology, the technicalities mm. of it, and sometimes that is all for naught. Yeah. Um, well, not necessarily because you just have to be a good translator. Ah, good, good, yeah. So it's about translating it. So, in essence, what Meg was trying to say is, um, if 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 she if we had the perfect Babel fish thing in the oh, air, right, yeah, yeah, the perfect translator. I hope the hitchhikers go to the galaxy. Yeah, if we yeah. had that, then Meg or what I would have heard coming out of Meg's mouth would have been. Um, Okay, so I think you're playing slightly different chord inversions to Josh. He's playing more up on the seventh fret with the sort of first inversions, and you're using the root position chords down <laughs> at the bottom. Can you change it more to be like that one? And I would have said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine, right, yeah. I'll He's just delete that take and let's just go again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but because I was sort of like deciphering the lemurs and the monkeys, but now I know that that's... <laughs> But now I know that that's how sort of like she visualizes. This is a it. session, not Planet of the Apes. Like. Exactly. <laughs> Just like there's a war going on. And yeah. that's the thing as well. Like I've had this with sessions in um, in London because um, I, I used to do a lot of bass stuff, and it was always about. Um, just to sort of getting the client to sort of say what they wanted and then go, yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and turn that into musical terminology yeah, yeah. in my head and then just go, you mean more like this? Yeah. And then they're just like, yes, yes, of that's course, it. Of course, yeah. Or, or sometimes 
uh, if you're really mean, uh, literally just play it exactly the same way after they've explained to you <laughs> what they want, and they'll go, yeah, now I've explained to you what I want, then that sounds yeah. completely different. Do you think that's like, there must be some kind of phenomenon? There's an ego thing in there somewhere, yeah. like a bit of a problem with them just wanting to have an input and yeah. just sort of be like, yeah, I did that. I've had that with some uh, some hip-hop artists I've worked with before, um, whereas like they can hear what they want, they'll tell me what they want, um, and then I'll play the same thing back and then they'll just be like, yeah, that's bang on it. Because mm. I think it's the fact of that they, they are, there is that romantic thing with hip hop sometimes where they have to have their, their sort of uh, fingers in every part of the production. Right. Um, um, so yeah, I don't know. Oh, there must be a terminology. Like, uh, you know, tweet in if you if you know anything about that. You're on Twitter, on you? It's at Ricky J Webb. That's right. Um, yeah. And I'm at Locke Belize. So if you're listening live and just you know, if if you know there is a terminology for that, please let us know. Um, so yeah, you've been uh, gigging with me this weekend as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did. Um, oh, I'm going to get this wrong now. We did. Was it? It was Saturday and Sunday, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so Saturday. So I had, um, yeah, I had workshops Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, we had shows. And the Saturday one was, oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? Was it was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. the Froys. Yeah. Um, so I said it was in Woodbridge, but it's actually in Chillsford, mm. um, which is quite far out of Woodbridge. Yeah, it's like, go to Woodbridge and just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> don't so ever stop go into the water I'm yeah. off the wooden bridge it's not far dead. off actually is it it's pretty it's getting towards the coast isn't it if, yeah. you, if you go down that way yeah it's up towards Albra but it's it's just before the river I think um, it's the river Arrow. Orford Arrow. it's near Orford that's Castle it, isn't that's it, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah awkward um, but yeah so where were the sorry where castle. were the awkward castle <laughs> just walk in and just be like I'm not sure it's supposed to be oh, the here the decor's all wrong <laughs> Super awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, wait, I, uh, I didn't, I'm just uh, going to call it Awkward Castle. Awkward right Castle on. forever. Um, uh, yeah, so you, was it IEM workshops you had on? on yeah. So was I've, it Thursday um, and Friday? It was Thursday and Friday. I had on the Thursday, I had to teach a workshop that normally takes a whole day. Right. Um, about... It, it, it's sort of you get all the uh, all the kids into groups and say, okay, you've got to come up with a business that could work in the music industry and then present it to us in a sort of like, I don't know, uh, sort of quasi Dragon's Den style. All right, yeah. But but obviously <laughs> I don't sit there kind of... Like, know, That's and, awful. I'm out. Yeah, I don't have any money to give you in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> it's all but going it's on my son. Yeah, because it's not necessarily about like, trying to get me to be convinced to fund you. Mm -hmm. It's more about just kind of fleshing out ideas in business and then, uh, yeah, being able to tell the whole class because mm -hmm. you're, you're presenting it in front of the whole classroom. Mm. You, t you tell the whole class, um, okay, here's what they haven't thought about, here's what they have thought about, and right. here's, here's basically what would happen if you were to try and get a business like this actually off the ground. Yeah. It's interesting because it, as a musician, sometimes you do have to do some mental gymnastics to turn it. Uh, your mindset into a business mindset. Oh, yeah. it's, it's so easy to just be sitting there going, oh, I've got a gig tonight. That's loads of fun. Because um, it's just fun. It's just something that you do. Um, whereas, you know, you've got to sometimes just flip it and just like, okay, I've got to be there bang on time. I've got to do my work professionally. Uh, and I've got to, you know, leave them wanting to hire me again. So yeah. I think exactly the same as you would turning up to work every day. Yeah. So, so teaching think... that to kids is quite important. Yeah, and then being business minded and being creative is like a Venn diagram with a like it's a really small overlap ah. because I don't know I feel that they're sort of almost the opposite ends of a spectrum mm -hmm. because to be creative is to kind of one make mistakes mm -hmm. um, purposefully mm -hmm. um, and two kind of you know sort of take your time exploring lots of options and just you know it, it's, it's exploring whereas business seems like it's the um it's the science rather than the art you gotta be quite you know? clinical with it yeah 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 i think you're right yeah intentionally make mistakes or be at one with your mistakes and move on but i think you know you can do that in business i mean i i have to sort of be very much in that business mindset as you do with web tunes that it's kind of like okay separate the two uh but also you know you're still using the same brain to process both of those things right the whole left and right brain myth um doesn't quite you know fly in this but yeah it's that thing of like you got to kind of combine those um so that the kind of mistakes that you make in a song i mean you you'll make that if you were if you were suddenly you know running a plumbing business or something you right. make a mistake and you have to sit there and say okay do i live with this or do i find a way to rectify it mm. um but yeah so it's, it's good that you're, you're you're doing that with iem 
and showing the kids how to do this. Yeah. I so these kids. So yeah, the Thursday and Friday were interesting. Sorry, just going back to that yeah. because the Thursday I had to run that workshop four times in the space of an hour <laughs> each. Oh my God. So I had to do like four one hour condensed versions of it. And then on the Friday I had to do a full day version of it. So it was really interesting because there was oh just gosh. nowhere near enough time in the former and sort of a bit too much in the latter. Right? And it <laughs> kind of, you know, demanding a little bit of padding, but obviously trying to make that padding not just completely useless. You've yeah. got to sort of, I don't know, just sort of... The um, waffle. Well, yeah, but also just I, I did like a little bit of my presentation spiel that I do all the time anyway with people yeah. where I tell them about how the music industry needs you, you know, like the yeah. Uncle Sam poster kind of thing. I, I, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, t I tell them about Dave Grohl and how amazing he is for like breaking his leg and then still turning mm. up. Exactly. Because yeah. I was just really tired of this whole mentality of like, mm, I've got a bit of a cough, I can't make rehearsal. And that yeah, kind of thing. exactly. I mean, you know, we've had to deal with that so many times. <clears> like this, uh, the Lockerbillies uh, is my main form of income. Some weeks, I think it's the same for you guys oh, yeah. in yeah, the band. It's and a big chunk for me. Yeah, for sure. and, and it's that thing of like, you know, if, if you've just got a bit of a sniffle or something like this, like it's it's either you stay at home and try and get better and just throw away 200 quid mm. or you suck it up and just get to work and you just and you do it i mean i've you know i've had it's the curse of self-employment yeah there? exactly you can't go on holiday um you know unless you you are okay well, with you can do all these brands. things you just can't justify it yeah that's true. like yeah. until you've got like the mansion and the pool and all the cars yeah. you can't justify anything because you're always like well i could always earn a bit more you I've know got those on the do sims this. does that count yeah, sure. I think that's the only reason why I play these games. Like I think Skyrim. that's a sour just... grape solving it, but it, yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah. Be, it'll be fine. Don't well, need to I, mention. I, I got it on the Sims, so it's fine. It's absolutely uh, fine. I didn't even want it. So yeah, well, I'll play some music in a minute, but I'd, I'd like to know a bit, a bit more about how your weekend went, because obviously, you know, yeah. everybody hears my Lockerbillies experience on the weekends, but never the people that have to, you know, deal with me going, play this, play that, ah, shouty shouties. Yeah. Um, so being in the locker billies is the definition of winging it <laughs> and for no one else more the locker wingies than it is for me because I'm I'm often turning up and I don't know what, what instrument, instrument I'm playing, playing? <laughs> what songs we're doing what time we're turning up how much we're being paid what to wear like I'm always just like I have no idea I'll just be there and we'll just hope for the best you're a consummate professional Rich as well I love you like the fact that you can deal with my my uh, my flap my flappiness sometimes I'm very good at reading your elbows. If yeah. you could like come up with a language with just elbows, yeah. I'd be the first subscriber. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I think it's from that exercise that you showed me where you put your elbows together and oh, you, yeah, the... you clap, and it's a great exercise. Anyway, so yeah, um, so you're reading my elbows uh, Saturday at the Froys, which was a fantastic show. Yeah, I was playing keys and saxophone. Yeah, because Rainer was on the drums. So yeah, um, this has probably been explained many times, but when it's just Joss. It's just Josh. Right, when yeah. it's a two piece, it's either Josh and Murray or Josh and me. Yeah. Uh, when it's a three piece, it can be any number of things, but it's usually Josh on guitar, uh, Murray on bass, and myself on drums. And then when it goes to a four piece, I move over to the keys and saxophone, and Rainer plays the drums. Yeah. I said you recently, though, because a lot of the time yeah. it'll be a four piece, uh, Rich will play the drums, and then we'll get in a saxophone player or yeah, a like harmonica Harry player. Or, yeah. Yeah, like a jazz. Yeah, sorry, carry on. So, yeah, um, so the Saturday gig, we had um, keyboard. And I've been massively uncomfortable on a keyboard for a long time. And I think it was about, it was a couple of weeks ago, we did a hoppy show. Hoppy show hoppy yeah. Hopefuls, yeah. And something sort of tweaked and I just sort of kind of got used to the gear. Because it's mostly just like, I don't know, uh, it's, it's mostly five, just yeah. like an engineering problem that I'm dealing with. It's not right. really a musical problem. I mean, I'm nowhere near as comfortable on a piano as I am elsewhere, but I'm, it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's more just kind of the fact that when you play a keyboard, you're almost always um, sort of like riding the fader yeah. as you go. Mm. And this new keyboard I've got, you can literally do that. Yeah. And, and that's really, really handy. You'll probably notice keyboard? most What's... of the time when I'm playing, I've always got my hand on the volume yeah, control. Yeah, it's interesting. So, it's like an organ player more than anything else. Yeah. What, so what, what, what model is your Korg? Oh, God, I've been through like a million keyboards. At one point, I owned eight keyboards. Yeah. And I've started selling off the ones I'm not using now. But um, So I'm using a Korg SV1. And, and it's an 88. Yeah, 88 no weighted keys. But the important bit is that it's it's got a good piano sound, a good clav, a good... 
um, organ, a good road, Roads, yeah. so useful, yeah. and a couple of other little things like a whirly and some st strings and stuff, but I don't use those. And the interesting thing that you really liked about it was that it uses an IEC or kettle lead. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's great. So I, much better. I broke about three different power supplies for all yeah. my old keyboards. And they're greedy. Like I, I hate how greedy AC or DC adapters are on an extension. Because that, like you know, you'll have this extension that's that's a, a round thing. So you you know you'll have a, a square of of inputs. Oh, for space. Yeah, for, yeah. So, so oh, greedy. Yeah, they are, so yeah. and then you know, and it will stick over another another plug input. You're like, oh well, that's that extension cable ruined. Yeah. It's like, Why isn't somebody sorting this out anyway? Yeah, it's like a massive big sort of tumorous plug that's all sort of. <laughs> overtaking all the room and everyone else is like, I don't want to go next to him. And on that note, I'd love to play some music. Uh, this <laughs> is uh, a band that's playing locally. They're called Thy Last Drop. This is a track called The Drop. This is on Spotify. It's on everything. Check this out. This is an Harley and Josh show. First play, in it. That was the drop by Ooh. thy last drop. That's the intro to their album. That's available on Bandcamp. Uh, yeah, they're a sick band. I was just saying to Rich that you know they, they have this whole gimmick where uh, this guy goes out with a with sort of a rice paddy style helmet and helmet like hat on. You know the kind of the conical shaped things in like a rice picking uh, outfit. And he'll go out into the crowd and start off. So you saw it at the beginning of that track. There was all that, that dong, dong. And it was in the middle of that. I saw a video of them playing at WoW Festival and they nailed it. Anyway, super fun band to go watch. Stick around for the gig list to find out where they're playing. So, Rich, we've, uh, we, so last Saturday, uh, we start, well, the Saturday before we started, a new thing that we're doing every Saturday now, which is where we're putting on like a little thing for people to to uh, have musical fun times with. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll call it the musical fun time section. Um, so I want you to choose one of your favorite uh, things because, okay, so this week's one was uh, ruin a band name with just one letter. I'll start Bark Street Boys. And uh, Rich, uh, have you found either a favourite or have you come up with one? I think I've found my favourite. It's so annoying. I had loads in my head because I was doing them. Like when I saw the post come up, I was like, oh my God, these would be amazing. <laughs> but my favourite one is uh, the Rolling Scones. Because <laughs> it, it forces you to say it as Scones. Scones, yeah. You can't say the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Scones. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So who did Rolling Scones? The first person. Oh, it was Lloyd Willis Turnbull. Ooh. Yeah, he was the first one. There's a couple of people that did that one. Uh, I think my favorite one, uh, I can't actually say it on the radio. But yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> a couple of those. Yeah, we got uh, called the Locker Willies. Oh. And the Lickabillies. Can't say that on radio. Um, uh, but yeah, I, thought, I quite like the, the I just did. Uh, uh, Chris Last from The Rock Project said the why instead of the who. And um, one of my favourite ones was instead of Hot Tramp, Hot Trump. Oh, that's not fair. No, that's not that's fair. That's mean. <laughs> that is really mean. So yeah, that is, uh, we're doing that every Saturday now. So join in on our Facebook page to sort of, you know, do different things each week. There's going to be loads of different Did ones. Did that come time. a little bit from the the movie title game where you do like try and guess a movie? Because we did one where you sort of do the game the other way around. So you have to describe the synopsis of the movie. Yeah. And the other person has to guess the title of the film. So what was it? Uh, the Murray's favourite one was uh, Liam Neeson just goes around uh, and picks up things and leaves um, um, with things that aren't his take. All oh, right. It's just, it's taken without the end, basically. <laughs> He's just like, that's mine. <laughs> I'll have that. I'll have that. <laughs> Good luck. That'll be the end of it. Um, so yeah, anyway, so uh, now we, uh, we are announcing... That this week is the first time uh, that we will be uh, en enacting the new Harley and Josh show live show bingo. So this is a brand new thing that uh, you haven't seen, Rich. There um, may not work this week, but we've been threatening to do this every week um, for the past couple, past month, I think it is. But uh, basically, uh, we thought that we've just got, you know we talk about the same stuff a lot. So uh, at three o'clock, check our Facebook. And you'll be able to see that there is the new live show bingo um, picture that we've done, which basically just if you get a line uh, of, of things that we've talked about, then uh, you win something and we'll change it each week what you win. So things that we've got on here, Harley nerds out about audio gear. 
Uh, it's very difficult for that to happen today. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, Harley, yeah. Well, if he does, we're not going to know about it. You already did. You nerded about your, your Korg, so I yeah, guess you know true. it's interchangeable. Uh, Josh has a rant, and there's a little picture of a high horse. Oh, cool. Um, uh, we talk about Impilo. Josh sings a new jingle. Josh sings a new jingle. Yes. Bang. Uh, you can or, strike that off right now. Yeah, exactly. Somebody forgets a person or band's name. It happens every single week. Uh, we talk about Rainer Vandale. Somebody mispronounces Copas. Copas. You mean Copas? No. <laughs> I don't. I'm just trying to fill them all in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, check Hi, it Rainer. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, quirky there he is. We've already mentioned Rainer today anyway. Yeah. So there's on there. So he's listening then. But yeah, so there's a uh, Tom McCarthy word, word panarty. Um, which we do one every single week, and Jason the Lockerbilly. So yeah, check that out. It's on our Facebook page at 3 o'clock. I want to start off my little section of talking about things with some good news, Rich. Good news. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's lateral. This is a lateral thinking here. It's good, it's good news. In London, it's now been reported, Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, has now uh, reported that uh, the decline in new live music venues has now plateaued. So okay. the past sort of 10, 12 months... Um, there hasn't been a drop in live music venues, so nowhere has been closing down. And it's been a steady decline for a number of years now. Um, and, you know, for a while it was, it was very impossible to, to not see uh, a post going up about, oh, this famous venue's closed down, yeah. this one's fallen on hard times. But um, so it shows that, that, you know, there's a lot of uh, PRS licensing payments that uh, have been dropped for sort of smaller venues, etc. Right. So, um, so that shows that some legislation is working. Okay. So there is, you know, it's, it's good news for the for the London music uh, scene. And it can be. Yeah? What it do you think? It can be. Well, the first thing I'm thinking is like the first like stumbling block I'm seeing is that like it depends how you report, how you say like music places closing down. And mm-hmm. is it more about the fact of how many there are, mm-hmm. like the, the, the physical number of venues doing it or or is it about the quality mm. because there's a lot of pubs that sort of like will happily throw a band on in the corner if they're certain that it will make them a certain amount of money mm-hmm. on the bar mm-hmm. but does that really give them sort of they're a live music venue yeah are they mm. do they get to call themselves a music venue and then if that pub shuts for say other reasons do we say then oh one of the of one of our greatest live music venues has now been closed when really it was just the only place that people could you know, shuffle up in a corner, put some amps up, and just try yeah. and play their music to people. Mm. Well, that, I don't, I don't think that's something uh, that that is something not to be played down because those kind of places are where you prove your worth mm. as a musician. Like you know, because uh, if if the only music venues there were were these big stage, massive, uh, you know, O twos, blah blah blah, then people that the kind of people that we teach would never get up on stage because right. there's those there's confidence they, issues. They haven't got. Well, also they have, they they need to sort of level up to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got you've got to sort of start small and, and build up. Yeah, for sure. But I think one of the other things that I think is the big problem is that, and I'm including myself in mm-hmm. in the blame here, is that most people when they go out, they want to go and chat with their friends and drink beer. Yeah, a lot of the time. If they're going out trying to do that and there's a live band on, they're like, ah, oh, should we go somewhere else mm. so we can hear each but other? But that's where those pubs where just a band on in the corner mm. is great because they're not brash, they're not abrasive, like just really loud and you can't, so you, if you went out to a pub, it's kind of like, you know, the smokehouse, um, mm. people don't come here just to hang out, they come out just to watch a band, so it's right. that function. But that's different, that's an actual venue, music I think. venue. For me, yeah. that's what feels like a music venue. If, if you say, oh, I'm going to go see that band tonight, the reason you left your house, house yeah. is to go see a band yeah and that's different to trying to kind of like you know get stragglers from the street to come in and just go oh these guys are really good why don't we stay here to yeah. drink you know that's mm. that's a completely different yeah. so yeah I think there's there's those sort of gatekeeping moments um mm. where you know those kind of venues are very very useful for the non-live music fan you know they're, they're sort of like oh, i don't really like to go out to gigs but then they turn up to a you know um a weatherspoons or, right. or an O'Neill's or something like this, and this there happens to be a band on, mm. that could be their gateway drug. Yeah, but and there's also yeah. Speaking of like the slippery slope thing, there's there's also covers bands and originals bands that makes yeah. a huge difference here mm-hmm. because if if you know your average guy goes out to a Weatherspoons and someone's playing some mm-hmm. like lovely, really well played covers mm-hmm. at the at the you know the place they're going out drinking. When they've started drinking enough, they're going to want to get on the dance floor and they're going to be, you know, in this amazing state of like euphoria. They're like, I love this song and it's being played live just for us, you know, and they get that sort of like 
that feeling that everyone else has been saying for years. Yes, duh, Jody that's what gigs. live music is. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. That's why it's so fun. Mm. But they obviously can only get the most that. out of that when it's covers when it's because something it's like something that. they've heard. And this yeah, is yeah. something that, like, again, I'm not I'm not even part of the solution with this. <laughs> but think like, about listening it. to brand new music is hard. Yeah, thank you. Think about this. Like, um, bands like us, the Lockerbillies, mm. uh, started off just covers. Yeah, just Johnny Cash, just Elvis, just Buddy Holly, and you know, a handful of sort of Dion and the Belmonts and, and Richie Valens and stuff. Uh, lots of Chuck Berry, obviously. But now we have two uh, albums out mm-hmm. um, and are starting to play way more originals. So it's not only those those small p- music pubs are gateways for fans; they're also gateways for, for band. artists. Yeah, because yeah, we'll true. we'll sort of like we'll get the bug for playing songs. And then people in the audience will start saying, "Do you know any? Of the, do you have it on your own?" Yeah, and that will flick the switch for some people and just go, "Yeah, why don't I play, make some of my own music?" Yeah, and then it sort of happens. But anyway, so the interesting thing about that is that Sadiq Khan has made uh, a live mu- music venue map of London okay. now that his is now available on, on on the London Mayor's website and stuff like that. Um, but I I would like for that to happen in Suffolk. Okay. Um, so. People listening in, if you agree, uh, tweet your local council people or tweet Suffolk, Kist- Suffolk Coastal District Council, Ipswich Council. See if they... Or write them an old school letter. Yes. They, they love an old they school letter, it. like a Signed, snail mail. Yes, they or with that. a wax seal with yeah. Harley and Joshua. And that's it. the thing, like all these places that have still got the legislational power, particularly locally, yeah. there's still the sort of generation of old school of yeah. like, um, give, give, give your local MP a good telephone call yeah. and, and tell him about the blighters over yeah, yeah put, put it up on facebook does nothing like you listen to right. go oh i missed this live music venue it was great yeah and which like, will be seen by no nobody one who can do anything about who it. does legislation yeah exactly so yeah uh tweeting is great for that though um yeah. because they've noticed just how much that you know by tweeting you can become a very you can get very high office apparently um i'm not going to say who um but you <laughs> let's know, not go down no i'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from the hole um, so we're ending up with no shut up uh, so uh, yeah so tweet people uh, tweet us if you think if you agree that we should get a local live music venue map um, uh, because yeah there's, there's so much going on there's uh, people like uh, the Grapevine and Ipswich Gigs um, ICR BBC Suffolk that will be talking about this but it's relied on too heavily for uh, outside uh, organisations from councils to be letting you know about entertainment, really, mm. isn't it? It's, it's, it's all been subcontracted to people like uh, yourself and I. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, see if you can see if we can get some change there. Let's talk about what I did. I did stuff. What did Josh do? What did I do? Uh, so, what I've done, so don't, don't laugh. That's a very serious jingle. I love it. Okay, so uh, Tuesday I was recording at the mill up near Dis. Um, uh, Johnny, the producer, uh, very fantastic guy, you know, knows his gear, but it's in the middle of an old mill, like really old mill. That the, the sails are gone, but it's like this octagonal shape with a little live room in it and everything like this. And we're recording some disco stuff um, for uh, Girls of the Internet, which is Tom Kerridge. Yeah, and... Hang on, wait, is that the band name? Yeah, Girls of the Internet, okay. exactly, yeah. And a uh, friend of yours, uh, Jack Sunaway, was playing bass oh, from no. The Revelators. We were yeah, talking about yeah. you because we were talking about, he was talking about how great you are at following on drums. I met him at a random gig, yeah, yeah. Um, playing for, yeah. Oh, where was the venue? I'm, no, I'm not even going to try. I'm going to waste half an hour <laughs> trying to scrape, scrape that out. Yeah, that's fine. Find scrape it. it out. But yeah, so that's 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 some bingo card there. That's uh, you know. Yeah, I forgot a name Rich of forgets. the music venue. <laughs> Something there, maybe not. Rich, um, Rich loses brain cells. <laughs> Take it off. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that a jingle. Good doy. <laughs> good doy. <laughs> good, good. Um, so yeah, I, I had also uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I had the Rock Project with the fantastic David Brown um, and Rob Lewis, Tom McCarthy, Ashley Howard, Chris Last, all those fantastic players, and obviously Harley Cotton. He's not here, so so let's not mention that. Oh, I think I did. Um, but yeah, so that was uh, so we're at the meeting place on Mondays, which is just off Norwich Road, Nipswich. On Wednesdays, we're at Copleston High School. Um, and Thursdays we're at Old Jet. Old Jet. Old Jet. Old Jet boy. Uh, on Thursday nights, well, actually, we're doing the home ed groups now. 
which is nice because all the all the kids that? that so it's because obviously we usually work in extracurricular hours so we'll be you know after three half three mm. four o'clock ish um, is when we start our sessions for about two hours the junior sessions it's you know seven till sort of 11 12 ish and seniors 11 12 ish it's high school age up till 18 and this yeah. is the music teacher's problem is that they always have to work after that period yeah exactly so, like all their friends who work nine to five jobs they just never see them yeah exactly <laughs> exactly the night. true yeah exactly um so the adult session is from like eight o'clock ish onwards okay because it's past the bedtime of most of the kids yeah but yeah so but the the home ed kids obviously we they make this part of the uh, you know the parents make this part of their curriculum almost so it's during daytime school hours okay so sort of that's good two till four Mm. And that's old jet on Thursdays, which that's that's a new session that, that David Brown has has come up with, um, and yeah, it's very interesting because all these kids that sort of not quite so used to having lots of other kids from other families around all the time, yeah. getting used to them and getting up and playing a band with them and realizing that they absolutely love this, you know, yeah. which is super fun. Um, and one of my students was uh, was called Travis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I uh, remember this story. And I imagine like, my favorite video on the YouTube uh, is uh, of an owl. Is it an owl? Like it's a little, a little baby owl. Is it a baby owl? Yeah. Baby owl just walking away from the camera. It's just a guy. Goes, You've got this, Travis. Make him wait for it. The owl stops, turns his head, boom. <laughs> and I just mid lesson. I, I was, think it was Carla that showed us that, wasn't it? No, I showed Carla that. Oh, you showed yeah. Carla. Wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it just seems like such a Carla thing. Yeah, good old Ratch Weeb Carlas. Um, so yeah, we uh, uh, there was a kid called Travis, and he wasn't quite getting it. And I was like, "You've got this, Travis." And, <gasps> <laughs> just noticed i must show you something yes exactly i did i actually showed him that in the lesson he was he was falling about laughing so yeah uh friday night i had a duo show with mr murray collins at the bursting crown which was loads of fun mm. uh thanks to jeffrey for having us for that one um where in, is that again in burston uh where is that again <laughs> near dis <laughs> oh, okay yeah so it's about a 50 minute drive away they're a very interesting pub because they do theater in there and also okay. comedy nights and, and things like this. So, you know, it's an old Tudor, bar, uh, uh, Tudor Barnish kind of thing. It was 1580. It was, it was, it was built. So uh, not, not three. I know, actually, no. <laughs> 1580 doesn't work as a time. Um, so, uh, yeah, the absolutely beautiful place. Just, to, you know, 20 just, past four. I wish, yeah. Some, <laughs> that's some quick maths. <laughs> uh, skitty bap. Um, probably some quick, incorrect maths. Yeah. Uh, which is almost all still, quick maths. You still got to the wrong answer quicker than I could. <laughs> um, 17. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Batman symbol. Um, so, yeah, um, it ended up with, you know, uh, us thinking, man, I wish this was our local pub because it's, fantastic in there yeah. uh if, um bessie turner put us on to play there i've played there with impilo uh, depping because gav mac is still away um so yeah we played there on friday um lovely lovely reception bunch of bunch of crazy old people dancing yeah. which is what is we love there, what like is it close enough though for any of the sort of already hardcore ips which people to come up and see you there or so it's about a 50 minute drive so, so you're more relying on people in that area yeah. actually but you know it's it's, it's right in the middle of nowhere so it's kind of like the only drinking hole for, so loads of people go down there and knowing because there's going to be good Do you stuff know what on the capacity is roughly Oof. Just, I want know, to say a like hundred. Yeah. yeah, I reckon. So yeah, that was Friday night after I'd actually helped out Sam Robson from IEM, um, putting on, uh, giving some backline gear to Homegrown Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, I was driving that up. Um, so I've heard Homegrown was great because I picked up the gear on Sunday. Um, Sam Robson ha has really helped them out with that because he's got lots of gear because of this industry education stuff that he has hired out to these people that sort of need you know, backline gear, you know, just drum shells so that dr touring drummers can just bring a snare in the back of their, yeah. you know, the little hatchback. Um, and they can just bring amp heads instead of, you know, bringing huge, great big combos. And, yeah. and, and I saw him this morning, actually. Oh, good. Yeah, he came and picked up a bunch He's of stuff alive. He's mine. just been on tour with Renegade 12 and James Hicks. Yeah. Um, who is responsible for Rich being lumbered with me. So, That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shame on you, James Hicks. Um, so, yeah, Saturday I was playing with Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson of the Phil Jackson Rock and Roll uh, Band, um, who was actually James Hicks's inspiration for wanting to be part of a rock and roll band. Right. Funnily yeah, enough, because yeah. he wanted to book Phil Jackson for his parents' um, upcoming anniversary. Mm. Um, and uh, so, but he wasn't available. Phil Jackson wasn't available, unfortunately. So I 
um, just out of nowhere just said to him, oh, do you want to start a rock and roll band? He said, yeah, and I've actually already got us a gig. <laughs> so, yeah, that was great. Um, Phil Jackson, with his own stuff, he's got this album called Seaside, which is now available. Um, that was actually in the grapevine for last month. Um, great review of it, uh, of it in there, um, available on his website and everything. So check that out. It's, it's got this traveling Wilburys, Bob Dylan meets Mark Knopfler meets Tom Petty meets the Beatles kind of vibe to it. Um, completely different yeah, to his. Yeah, he's very Beatles. Like I remember watching him play some guitar and playing some piano, and I was, I was, yeah, I was really impressed. He's got really good chord knowledge. He's very, yeah. he's very on it with that. Sort Definitely, of stuff, yeah. You know? But yeah, nice bloke, fun to work with. Yeah. Uh, Jay Goodrich couldn't play the show, so I was there with Stevie Doherty and Bongo Steve, who used to play drums for Impilo. So that was a really nice, fun gig. So I rocketed straight from there to the Froys, where you guys were already oh, starting yeah. to set up. Um, the Froys, David, thank you so much for booking us for that. It was a swing dance workshop beforehand, which was lovely. I really enjoyed that um, uh, because I, I joined in with my mum. <laughs> my mum came down yeah. to watch and I, and I was able to sort of learn a jive and swing dance with my mum. Yeah, I saw a fun little video of that. <laughs> it was just a private video that you sent. It would probably be far too embarrassing for the, uh, oh, for the general know. media. It's going to go up now. It's going to go up now. I know this. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was really nice just because, you know, me and my mum don't get to dance together much because I'll be usually gigging on the weekends and while she's free. So yeah. classic ships in the night thing. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Nice memories. Thank you for that, Froys. Um, I'm, I'm rocketing through this because I want to make sure that we get to the gag list. Um, sorry. Uh, so Sunday, uh, Rich and I played at Kersey Mill for Sue Smith's father, Bill Smith, which is a friend of my mother. Um, his 90th birthday. 90. Yeah. Like you said a great thing before we played. You were like, this is the time when people should actually start celebrating birthdays yeah because <laughs> you're like well done yeah actually well done 16 you know. oh yeah well done you made it to 16 you're not even at the median age yet yeah exactly yeah you can't even make a median age you're not even a mean age <laughs> yeah maybe you should just kind of do the first birthday that's a good one then yeah. five then 10 then 20 then 30 and then start going well this is getting impressive now yeah, yeah, 91 yeah. <laughs> this is good odds are getting in your favor boy. 91 and a half you are still going <laughs> yeah oh my god who's placed your bets yeah, yeah. but yeah good. no that was a really lovely 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 day they had this big family tree uh, of the smith family uh, up that they'd been doing every single year they made a, a big uh, get together with the families um, to sort of you know get an idea of their heritage and stuff which I'd like to do I think you were saying that you'd like to do a bit of that yeah for my, the um, um, I went to my my grandmother's funeral a while ago and someone had actually made quite an effort putting together the family tree I can't remember who actually put it together but it was absolutely fascinating even just to glance at it. I was I was amazed Mm. I don't even know how people do that. They trace their ancestry. I don't Mad. know what the process is exactly. Just a lot of like, you know, uh, library searching in yeah. local places. And these, some of these, you know, documents must be so And they haven't been digitized yet. No, exactly. You've got right. these ancestry.com places. But I mean, I think a lot of the time that's just a data farming thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's probably about yeah. right, actually. And those, those number, those 23 and me things as well, they get your DNA for a clone. Yeah. Well, yeah. isn't it more just to kind <laughs> of um, sort of have it on file or like... They try and sort of... Because you can have your genome sequenced now. What? Right? And it's actually quite affordable. I'm probably going to misquote <laughs> this, I think. But I think you can get it done for like around something like three grand or something. Oh, yeah, nothing. And when you used to... Like when, when the technology was first, you know, available to sort of super rich people, it was something crazy like 30 million or something. Right. So they reduced it quite considerably. Even though the top, you know, the bottom end of that is still really expensive. Singularity, man. Yeah, singularity happening. man it's happening yeah just like Westworld if you haven't watched Westworld uh, get in on that because it's starting to do a bit of that anyway uh, we've been derailed I've derailed the conversation I, just, I might have derailed I don't know that was, uh, I don't know you know it's, it's you know we're, we're on the train like Harley's like Harley's Harley train, train the Harley train which has no stations and goes full speed, speed ahead for quite a number of miles oh that's not fair Josh that's really mean <laughs> that's exactly what you said before we were on air <laughs> yeah. way to throw me under the Harley train yeah that's a- <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly yeah so yeah that was that was that was rich's rich's sick burn of harley where there's there's <laughs> that, there's no stations on the harley train the only way to get off the train is to derail it oh my god otherwise he's Someone gonna keep going a barista this roast just got dark <laughs> and colombian uh anyway so uh we have the gig list coming up now mon frere so there's loads of stuff going on this week uh we 
Uh, do have one public show, which is during the day on Saturday. We're playing at Shaker's Dairy Free thing. You're not playing that one because you're playing the evening show. That's right. Uh, but yeah, Shaker's Dairy Free is a new gluten and dairy free uh, milkshake place that's opening up in Colchester, which is 50s themed. So oh, cool. this is one of the nichest places we've ever played. Um, but I think it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to keep going because it's got that kind of. Um, yeah. The dairy-free stuff that's actually nice. I would really hope that whenever they serve you any shake, they have to slide it across the bar and yes. sort of catch it. The the opening is actually Back to the Future themed. It's okay. called, uh, it's called yeah, the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Oh, right. So, I can yeah. see that. Um, on I can the, see on, it. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. There it was. So anyway, uh, so this week's gig list coming to you courtesy of Ipswich Gigs uh, with Andrew Culture and Grapevine from Tony Bell. Thank you, Tony Bell, for having us in the in last last month's issue. So on June 16th, we have Riverwalk School Fundraiser with Tundra, the band that we played earlier, Thy Last Drop, uh, Kyanos and more. That's at the Hunter Club this Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, June 16th we also have Litter of Kings at the Swan uh, with Gavin Bowen at, in, that's the Swan in Ipswich uh, that is at 9 o'clock Litter of Kings I've played with them before on a solo set they're fun uh, for fans of Radio Orwell who are also playing this week uh, June 17th we've got Alden Patterson and Dashwood as well as Honey and the Bear that is at the Froys um, this coming Sunday I believe which is the 17th exactly so that's at 7 o'clock uh, tickets available on their website. Check them out. Honey and the Bear. We'll play some music for them uh, to 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 close. Uh, the Urban Folk Quartet at the Froys is also coming on Saturday. That's a, no, sorry, Friday. That's June fifteenth at the Froys in Woodbridge or Chilsford. June twelfth, we've got Wussy in Colchester, the Colchester Arts Centre, supported by Radio Orwell, which is uh, Joe Bailey, uh, owner of Punch Studios and Smokehouse. It's his band. Um, but yeah. Check them out. That's loads of fun. Uh, got those indie, nice, shoegazy kind of vibes. Uh, as well as ghost music are playing that one. Uh, June 15th, De Profundis plus Formicarius and Consecration playing at the Swan. That's courtesy of Darren Smith from Dead Soul Promotions. Uh, loads of good thrash and black metal coming at you from him. So if you like your gritty, dark stuff, check that out. That's June 15th at the Swan. June 15th, good friend of ours, uh, Matt Folks. We played his wedding. We did. Um, uh, in, it was it's a little TP thing. It was a lovely dance floor. We had to load in through the back of the TP onto the stage. Yep, remember you remember that, that when you played drums for that show? Yep. Uh, yeah, so that's Matt Folks playing with Pop Gun, June 15th, Gardener's Arms. Pop Gun, who actually played Robert Downey Jr.'s birthday this year. What? <laughs> that's super cool. There's videos of it on their Instagram of just them playing all day. Dead, dead. And there's Robert Downey Jr. losing his mind. <laughs> He's like, these guys are awesome <laughs> on his Instagram. Yeah, anyway, super cool. So that's June 15th at the Gardener's Arms. June 15th, also we have Stetson's Are Cool, Rob Lewis Music, uh, heading that one up uh, at the Wild Man in Sproughton. Uh, June 16th, really wanted to play this track uh, from them because it's one of my favourite tracks that we played on Harley, Harley and Josh Show. Um, it's called The Beginning by The Naked French. Uh, nice Joy Division kind of vibe from them. Um, nice kind of picked chorus style bass, that kind of thing. So uh, if you like your New Order Joy Division stuff, The Naked French plus Tangermin Mandarin are playing at the Smokehouse uh, June 16th. As well as the important one, Rob Lewis Music Services is hosting June 17th Icebreakers at the Railway. Now, Icebreakers is fantastic. It's basically an under-18s open mic night. So uh, anybody, is a lot of the guys from the Rock Project uh, will play at this one. Uh, but it, it's basically for anybody that want, has never played in front of anybody before or is just starting out. Just to go up in a completely you know, hassle-free, no-stress environment and just go up in front of friends, parents, teachers, and just sing and get the for songwriters or if they just want to do some covers. Uh, some yep. people. Um, I would have loved that when I was younger. Yeah, I definitely. I when I was loved their that. age. When I was a boy, I would have loved I, it. When I was 12 years old, I would have gone to Icebreakers. Um, so, yeah, that's great because somebody like the girl in the hat, who uh, is, is also a member of the Rock Project, after doing stuff like that, has gone on to doing way more gigs and is playing a lot of festivals this year so uh yeah applause to you well done rob so that's this so june 17th so uh that concludes the show rich yeah that's it that right went up. quick 
Yeah, it does go quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for filling in today. No I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to check out what Rich does, you can go to WebTunes. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, which he is putting up loads of really interesting stuff on, including sort of drum covers, as well as live footage of us playing the Lockabillies and a little garden show we did, didn't we? Yep. Yeah, that was quite fun. Um, so yeah, you can subscribe to that WebTunes on YouTube. Uh, also, he has a Facebook page, a Twitter account, everything. If you just want to learn some more about music, Rich Webb is the man. Um, and also, if you want commission some thing if you need something uh, some backing tracks if you're a singer but you don't have any music rich webb is also the man for that now check us out we are on uh we're at harley and josh show at gmail.com if you want to let us know about stuff coming up if you want to send us some music that you want us to play um check us out on the youtube this will be available on thursday um if you're listening to this now you already know that door um but yeah subscribe to our youtube channel we're on itunes we're on podbean um and every saturday we'll be doing games so check that out and we'll also be doing the bingo card as of next week. Um, so as for that, mate, you did a great job. Thank you so much for that, boy. Thank you very much. All Cheers right. for having me. Um, to play us out, this is William by Honey and the Bear. Enjoy, guys. See you later.